Wow, JD here. And as you can see by the title of this video, we are going to be discussing something that has been doing the rounds in the sim racing community recently. And that is with the iRacing Daytona 24 hours. And it seems like the past two or three weeks, there's been quite a lot of controversy. First with F1 in terms of people cheating, which is the video I did discuss because that has been quite a hot topic, especially internally with the drivers and seeing some other drivers in league racing definitely do the same or not the same because that's been proven in F1 Esports, but you can see there's a lot more drivers now on PC starting to employ cheating in order to get into F1 Esports. But then last week there was, or the couple of weeks ago, there was the R Factor, the the Mons 24 hours where Max Verstappen had a couple of disconnects and that event wasn't really taken that well by the community and left a bit of a sour taste in the mouths of many, many drivers, not just Verstappen, but many other drivers who also participated in the event. And now we are going to be discussing the iRacing topic and there has been videos on these already and I strongly encourage you to go to these guys channels. So Pablo, who's a very experienced iRacing driver himself, says he's not a content creator, but he did a fantastic video highlighting the key details of this, which I won't go into the full details because he has already done that more than good enough. So please make sure you check out his video if you haven't watched it already. Also from Stuffy, if I've said that correctly, he also did a video explaining this. And yeah, if you want the full context and everything that happened from an iRacing driver's perspective, who is very experienced, then definitely go to them to have a bit more of an expert analysis. But in this video, it's not really giving my expert opinion or anything at all, but it's just to raise awareness on how we can improve sim racing and just esports as a whole because again a lot of people who've watched my channel probably feel like i like making videos where i am um, kind of stomping on things and kicking the game while it's down and everything at all but for me it it really really grinds my gears where i see a competition or i see a platform or a game where there i just don't feel the integrity is in place and the organizers and sometimes even the drivers which we will be talking about in this video are not really doing what they're supposed to be doing and it's always about just looking good not about the integrity not about the sportsmanship not about the issues and make sure those issues never come to the surface or anything at all it's just about looking good because i think with social media these days and I know this too well myself from being on social media for a very long time now. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, it's about just looking as good as possible and trying to grow, trying to get the numbers, and that is it. And you no know, things will be forgotten in time. But really, to explain what's happened here, so in a nutshell, Williams Esports exploited the game in order to not only receive a pole position in the top split of the Daytona 24 hours, but then they actually went on to win the race with, you know, let's say, interesting tactics. And how did they do oh, this? No lag, Spike, well, please. the Daytona circuit is an oval one, but it has something called an apron. And no, this is not <laughs> something you were uh, put by your waist when you're cooking food. The apron is basically something that runs alongside of a track. So it's pretty much exactly the same as you know, in the UK, at least we have motorways where we have something called a hard shoulder. So it's just a part of the track where you can use for emergencies when you need to pull off, um, whether you've broken down or had a technical issue in this case, obviously you're racing in the virtual world. And it was clearly stated before this event that the apron is yeah, not part of the track and it should not be used in qualifying or the race. But Alexander Specs, who is, I think, the second highest I rating driver with 
10.3 ki rating so clearly he knows how to drive was using this and you know if you look at this screenshot here you can see when he was doing a race before wasn't using this part of the track or anything whatsoever when he was doing qualifying laps but then when he actually does the event i don't know how he could make it any more obvious and you no know, we can see from this footage here on the screen He's clearly using this part of the track, which is not allowed, and it was clearly briefed beforehand. And, you no, know, these are professional eSport drivers. Uh, if they didn't know this ruling, then they should certainly know this ruling. And uh, Williams eSports themselves should have the really responsibility of informing their drivers, if that's not the case. But I think it's quite evident here that when he changes his screen when he was streaming to just his face cam, not the... Uh, not actually looking at what we can see or what he can see on the road and you can even see it in the webcam itself he was using this part of the track and that secured him the pole position and for me i just find it absolutely crazy that you know, this guy could probably have got pole without even doing yeah. this or if not it would have been maybe a top three at the absolute worst it's a 24 hour race if it was a two or three lapper then yes the maybe race. then but I, I just don't understand why and I think the why in my opinion and now please let me know your thoughts on this is that there's just so much pressure to win and you now Williams Esports um, as far as I know and this might not be correct so don't take my word for granted you know, they don't get paid by the Williams F1 team because they have enough problems themselves obviously they're yeah. connected by name so they're representing it but it's all about their sponsors paying them and you know, if they're not winning races yeah. they don't get sponsorship opportunities and they don't get attention from other companies well, looking to invest in them and to use them as advertising and marketing also they get most of their income from prize winnings which i don't think this event had a prize pool or anything at all but i think it's just purely about trying to go down the history books of winning this event because this is probably one of the biggest events in sim racing yeah, throughout the know. entire year and yeah with i racing pretty much every track the track limits are quite consistent quite strict but i think one part of this where i racing is predominantly a fault is that this apron doesn't give you an invalidation so if you've played i racing if you watch i racing if you go off track it gives you an instant point and the lap does not count even if you just do one corner cut or we go off track where you shouldn't do, it will not count. But on this track, it doesn't do that. And I think for this being the biggest event of the year, that should probably clearly be in place when you have an event of this stature. So this part is definitely on iRacing for not solving the issue and really encouraging this in the first place. But as we've seen with the likes of S1 Esports, the controversy about the low FPS benefits in the handling, because if you didn't know, Running 60 FPS made it much easier to go over the curves where most of the drivers on PC used to use 120 FPS. And you know this actually could have arguably, I'm not saying it did, but it could have arguably determined the result of the season. Now, I'm not going to say who or what or anything at all, but you know, there were drivers who were doing really well at the start who were definitely using this. And then they decided to make a ruling in place where um, everyone had to use the same FPS, which... Now, when it comes to things like that, that should be clearly stated before um, a competition um, itself. And it can really determine the final result. So when it comes to things like that, I definitely think the organizers are at fault and they should be doing much more planning and due diligence to make sure that doesn't happen. But when the rules are clearly laid out prior to the event and the driver and team proceeds to ignore it, whether he did it on his own accord, whether the team's instructed for him to do it, I think it's quite obvious from the footage that you know this was intentional and the driver did know that you shouldn't be doing this. It wasn't like he wasn't aware of it. Then I feel this is something different entirely. But despite this, Williams Esports maintained their pole position. They went on to win the race, as I said above, in quite interesting fashion where if you check out Pablo's video 
It does show the tactics of the Williams team using lap cars to dictate the race. Dictate the race, sorry. Also, some cars just purposely who were already quite a few laps down going into the pits, waiting there for five minutes, waiting for the race leaders to come around and try and really just slow them down so that their teammates could actually catch up. And again, maybe there needs to be better ruling in iRacing. Certainly a lack of sportsmanship, in my opinion, but no, that could be confined to be within the rules. And again, the reason why I really wanted to make this video is I just really fear the integrity of sim racing. And the thing that does really annoy me, and it has for many years now, is that organizations and even individuals only really want to get as much attention, as much views, and to try and look as good as possible and you know actually doing things correctly doesn't really seem to matter and it just seems to be extra effort extra things to invest in and it's just about looking as good as possible also that drivers and teams will take any lengths to win at all costs and you know you can make up your mind yourselves these suits from the williams team who is a team that i respected i and I've spoken to them firsthand in the past and stuff and known many of their drivers. But you can see after this I event, when they did go on to win to in this fashion, yeah, I don't know if I agree with this. Having an obligation to win and even with Jensen Button adding his take into it, which we also saw Roman Grosjean oh, yeah, yeah, Gustavo, Gustavo. add his take on to the <laughs> R-Factor event that we had with the Le Mans virtual series, which, well, you know, Jensen Button, Absolutely love him as a driver. I've even met him in real life. He's a Williams Esports ambassador. So, yeah, this is why, you know, I understand when you're representing the company and the brand that you do have to you know, represent them in a positive way. But that's why I typically don't work with many brands and you know, co combine with people and stuff because I like to really just give my opinion. And sometimes that company and that brand... No, the F1 game, if you use hands as an example, aren't always going to be happy with it. But if there's something uh, that is good to talk about, then I always will talk about it. But I just really feel, especially for drivers who are coming into sim racing and especially people who are spending quite a lot of money each year to buy hardware, buy equipment, purchasing the game, such as the F1 game, you know, iRacing subscriptions, all that stuff. It's really important to be transparent and to have a real integrity because otherwise I feel that with the rise of esports it just feels like the integrity really is being kind of missed out of the uh, equation here so for me that's why I've been frustrated with F1 games for years because I do feel like it's more about the game looking good rather than actually being a good and this is something I don't want other games to fall into that the outcome of this is that Alexander only received a temporary ban so it's not a permanent ban or anything whatsoever which no i think i guess i think a permanent ban would be quite harsh he's one of the best drivers on iRacing. racing um but i think the team maybe should have been disqualified at least from the qualifying at the very least start at the back of the grid um if they're getting a pole position uh by this means then and it's clearly not within the rules so williams right now get to keep the win and they'll go down the history books as that they won the event which is you know for sponsors and companies coming in they might not be aware of the controversy and oh, that might look really really good in there but so i think what needs to change to put pressure on organizations to run things with more integrity how do we discourage it and how do we just stop playing cheating um, all together but yeah the thing just really infuriates me is that i think we really need to make this community better, to create a yes. fair opportunity for all drivers, because oh, right now I really like feel it simply good. isn't. And you no, know, <laughs> even when this event didn't even have a prize pool, yeah, there's other it. events such as F1 oh, Esports and yeah, other events which do have a big prize pool, like the Red Sport just yeah. announced they're going to be doing a 500k <laughs> prize pool. Right now, yeah, people do make sport. careers when the sim racing, whether that's you no, know, as an influencer yeah. or whether that's as a just a driver in winnings and stuff as well and with brands sponsorships 
I think there's just so much pressure in order to deliver. And you know, as we've seen, people will go at any cost because, you know, this is Alexander. He could have received a permanent ban, you know, which I think would have maybe been a bit harsh, but could have received a permanent ban. And that's his career over <laughs> for my racing. So taking that risk when I just feel like there wasn't really a need. But that's why I asked myself, why did they take the risk? And I feel... Maybe it's because they're just desperate to win at all costs. It's so important to come out on top at all costs, even if that means breaking the rules. But yeah, that's just kind of my take on it. Please let me know what your thoughts are. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be catching you very, very soon. Peace.